All right, hey, pretty gang, it is Jen, and I have a special guest with us here today. Okay, we're gonna be doing some Brave Boss Talk, and this is Miss Denise. So um, you can go ahead and let them know, like, where can they find you, your YouTube, your Instagram, and I'm gonna also link that in the description below also. Okay, I'm Denise Jerry. Um, I teach on braidestcourse.com. Um, you can also see me at YouTube slash denisejerry.com. That's about it. So, um, you guys, no, I'm not going to do that. We're going to be, um, going to be interviewing Denise and I'm going to be asking her a couple of questions. So the first question would be, why did you start braiding? What made you get into braiding? Um, braiding is something that I just did all my life ancestral. So I always did braiding. And so, um, when I seen micro braids, that's when I really got heavily more into just flat out braiding. Otherwise, I would just be braiding for like weaves or something like that. But micro braids would, would I would say, put me into braiding. Okay. And then um, as far as your braiding, um, are you trained? Is it self-taught? Did you go to some type of school for this? No, it's self-taught and it's um, family taught as well. It's just picked up in so many different spaces and places, but it's mainly self-taught. Yes. It's self-taught. So how do you mm -hmm. feel about some uh, states actually requiring a license or a certificate? How do you feel about that? Um, I really don't think that it's the state's place to require a, a license or a certificate for braiders. And um, yeah, it's, that's not their place because it's not under the same realm for as what the states require. The states require customer safety and sanitation and health. Yes, but it's more or less towards the dangers. It's another level that they go by as well. And it's the dangers that you may be putting the client in. Yeah. So I don't think the state should be uh, mandating hours and all this stuff for braiders. No. Okay. Yeah, me neither. Because I, I feel like it's, um, okay, definitely with the sanitation and health, uh, all the dangers of braiding, absolutely. But to make me take a, you know, one-year course, two-year course, especially when they start doing all this cosmetology stuff, it's like, y'all don't even touch braiding when, when y'all do all this training and, and all this education. You don't even get to the braiding part. So you pretty much are having me doing unnecessary things to get a certificate when you could have just gave me a sanitation and health course all by itself, right? And now you're making me pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a cosmetology license when really I'm just here to braid some hair. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to braid it, you know, get my braid and all. So is that something you talk about in your, in your, um, in your class or in your course? You talk about health? Well, yeah. So kind of like from the beginning question that you asked, like, why did I learn to braid? Okay, I'm also a third generation licensed cosmetologist. My granddaddy did her, my mom did her, and I do her as cosmetologist. So those 1,500 hours and things like that, I understand um, a perspective of why should I have to give all this time to somebody and, you know, it's not really benefiting me and it's kept, it's, they're making money and it's also wearing out my skills. And I also understand the perspective of, you know, if my grandfather or my mother wanted to pass down a business to me, they wasn't able to. So this is why I had to go to this school. So I also understand that in the cosmetology school, you're there to do a certain amount of hours. Yes, they may have you doing what they call uh, the mock state board. However, the mock state board really is against what they're uh, telling you to do, which is chemical processing. Mm -hmm. And chemical processing, regardless of how many times you do it on a mannequin, it's still not going to process the way it's going to process on top of a human head mm -hmm. under the heat and under the pressure that a human head got. Yeah. So even their stuff is not really even good enough or real. You know, like, why are you even making people come here for this stuff? Because it's not real. You may go to cosmetology school and never get to do the chemical services that you're being taught. That's why they get out of school and can't even do a bleach. Mm -hmm. Can't even do these services. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so 
they really charging them $20,000, me too, for nothing. So when I seen that Herb Braden came out and the problems that Herb Braden had in the state of Minnesota, one young lady knew that I was an instructor. She said, well, since you're an instructor, can you help me get this registration? Okay. So I helped them get the registration. I applied. I get, did the curriculum. But then I started looking more at the actual Herb Braden case. Okay. The herbrator case said the Board of Cosmetology cannot regulate a herbrator. Nobody in the whole state. Okay? So that's where the issue came. No, I need to help the herbraters. Right. Because right, right. I, I don't need to make them fall into the same trap I fell in or what I had to do. Why would I want to do that to somebody? Right. So that's where it became that I said, no, they don't need to do this. I look more at the law. She didn't say they had to do no hours. She didn't say none of this stuff. So that's when I was like, no, nah, they didn't have to do none of this. I think it should be about three hours. Mm -hmm. I started fighting legislation yes. and took them to where they are, where they, in some states, no. And right now at this time, they still don't have to have a certification. They're still going through law, but that's where I sit with the braiders. It's really not that I braid her. Mm -hmm. My passion is that the government shouldn't do this. Right, right. Okay. Well, being that you do have a course and you do train, how do you get your clients? How do you get people to come to learn how to braid from you? See, my course not to learn how to braid. Okay. That's why I send people to you. Okay. I don't, <laughs> that's why I come other. That's how I send people out to everybody else. Because okay. my course is not learning how to braid. My course is safety, sanitation health, safety, and sanitation. Okay. So just telling you and making sure that you know that you how to clean the combs, telling you about COVID, telling you about HIV, HPV, if you yes. cross sticking yourself with the needle, yes. just yes. stuff like that to keep okay. you being safe. Okay. I don't have to, I don't have to teach you nothing about braiding. Okay. So it's the safety and sanitation of braiding. Of unlicensed hair braiders, beauticians, and barbers. So if a yeah. barber is unlicensed, uh -huh. he gets to get this health, safety, and sanitation through me because I'm a voluntary agency. Okay. The Board of Cosmetology is a mandatory agency. Okay. I let people voluntarily come to me. Okay. Okay. You are, most people already got a skill. They already do this. They already doing it. They say what they call underground, these people try to say. So I'm helping them come above now. You don't got to be underground. You can just get this certification and open up. Even the DOJ and everybody else know you are out there. Right, so right, right. The certification, you're done. Okay. And that's, um, a, how, that's a great thing to know because a lot of people come to me and they're under the impression I'm going to teach them how to braid. Like, boo, I don't do that. Right, no. I'm just here to tell you how to set up shop, like look. yes, and how to market, how to get the people in the chair, how to do your stuff on social media, how to yeah. get all the links and the yeah. app. That's why I'm yeah. like, I don't know about nothing. Like, not yeah. that I don't know. Can I probably teach somebody how to do a little one or two things? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I feel like with braiding, it's something that you either you learn and you eventually get better over time, or something you just you're just good at. Like my mom back in the day, she she did Jerry curls. Mm -hmm. So her thing, mm -hmm. it's always been like all my sisters, I have uh, three sisters, everybody know how, knows how to do hair. Everybody mm -hmm. knows how to braid. But if you ask me, if you would say, hey, Jen, teach me, I'd be like, look, yeah, I don't know who you're going to get that from. It ain't me. <laughs> Go find somebody else that's going to teach you how to. But um, definitely I'm going to be sending people your way about the whole sanitation and everything because I feel like some people think you're just going to jump out here and just start braiding. It's like you're going to get yourself caught up. Just jumping mm -hmm. out here um, and braiding and you're not kind of gamed up on sanitation, you know, protecting yourself, protecting your clients. Right. Protecting your business now in sanitation because the person going can hit you with this COVID crap. Right, right. Like you came to my house, you did mm -hmm. my hair. And take you down. Yep, mm -hmm. and you got the 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 the, the, the Rona. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so now you gotta have an agreement signed by them. It could be a link, it could be a Google Doc, but get something from them. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So um well how much do you how much do your courses cost? And what is it one course? Is it is it a couple of courses? No, what it is, is it's a membership. So you sign up and it's lifetime and it's $692.66. Okay. And you sign up one person, you get a signed 
saying that you salon infection control you also get your window decal you get the book you get the uh appointment book for tracking and tracing your clients okay. um you get all the necessary guidelines and protocol that they have because the governor really can't tell you to make this protocol but he has a protocol out there that everybody else have that you don't have and he has created this protocol because the president told him to create a protocol okay. and the president is actually who controls you and he didn't give us a protocol to have so that's why i wrote him to get us a protocol have the educational videos up for a year so that we can not be um, going to their FEMA caps, camps. This is like institutionalized racism in my eye, but it's all these different head organizations that would have had more control over us and power over us, even though the Board of Cosmetology did. You understand what I'm saying now? So I needed to free the braiders on another level. So right now, as currently as I'm talking, if you sign up, it'll be just the 692 for a lifetime. And ain't no go back again. And all you got to do is keep up on Mondays. I'll be doing videos. And I also do um, send out these uh, blog texts, all the stuff. You know, the normal stuff. And that's it on anything and any updates. And right now, currently, my biggest thing is for all the braiders and everybody to know is that Custom and Borders is on their hair. And they are talking about human hair products. Okay, they're already shutting down all these beauty supplies that's Chinese operated and everything else. So they look at it like you got somebody kidney or you got somebody eye. Your human this with her is her transplant. They're not talking about human hair product chemicals or human hair product gel. They talking about human hair as a product. So I just want them all to be aware and watch out for that. Do they, uh, what they're calling uh, supply chain due diligence, making sure you got your hair from where you should be having it. Because right now in this time, we really don't know what's in store. Right. Okay. And even more so now, what is your opinion on people going to actually just go to people's house and braid it? I already, I done told the people, look, this is a high risk, right? Doing hair is not essential, boo. Getting your hair braided is, while we want to look good and look nice, it's not essential. So what is your take on going to people's homes and currently braiding hair? My take on it is some people just got to do some stuff that they got to do. And uh, I believe that I am highly spiritual. So I believe the Lord or whatever yes. God they going to is going to do whatever they need them to do. Yes. But my opinion on it is they got all these counterfeit masks and the hospitals don't even have enough PPE that's for real for themselves. So how you going to have a real one to go in somebody's house and do anything? Right. You barely got a real one to go in the grocery store. <laughs> I don't know. I, but if you got to do it so you can go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. then you got to do that. Yeah. Do what you and do. hopefully the person that won is so bad it's clean. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hardy mad so do you want to go over there? And he didn't have the Rona, the Vid he called me? No. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, it's it's well, right? the bed and you still cut. What? Oh man, oh man, now I gotta go home. I'm gonna get this. So how do you feel about braiders taking whatever they know how to do and putting it online? What, what is your opinion on that? What you mean taking whatever they know how to do and put it online? If you are pretty much your braiders go online, like should they start doing training videos? Should they start doing DIYs? Like, Oh, yes. I will definitely do a training video. If Okay. So you're saying if I was a braider, how would I tear up and what would I do right now since this don't <laughs> happen? Yes. Okay. So since this did happen and I'm a braider and I would normally go to their house and maybe my client might be scared too. Yes. So I will uh, use my Zoom to show them how to do it. Okay. 
I would show them how to put do they on her. I would probably even go so far as like have some on my hair showing you how to twist it, what to put on it. Or have my baby next to me doing my child hair while they doing their child hair. Something to make them, you know, feel because they nine times out of ten a quarantine type person. They're not going outside. They just want this for this look, probably so they can be going on Zoom. Right. You know, so <laughs> I would do something like that, and I would um, I would also get more into like having a product to sell them, mm -hmm. having something that I made or that I got that's personal that I could sell to them, and I could say because I can tell you in the cosmetology industry they were selling the people the chemical, they were selling them the bleach, the hair bleach, the color. Whatever it is they was doing, you know, whatever color line they got, they was selling them that amount up out of there, and they was calling the curbside pickup. What? <laughs> because if you, okay, earlier you were saying that that's a majority part, a part of what you are showing in cosmetology is how to deal with chemicals. Why would I sell that to somebody and just be like, here, go, go mesh it, well, I can understand. That how could the chemical that. oxidize outside in California when he had them outside? Come on, be a cosmetologist. I was like, no, they are in friends or on hair braiders. Oh hair braiders is the only person that could do her anywhere. Huh. Wow. I wouldn't be telling nobody no, no chemicals. So being that you do know a lot about you know legislate legislations and the laws for braiders what direction do you see hair braiding going in do you see more states doubling down and wanting more people to be licensed or trained or do you think we're going to continue on the same path that we're on kind of like some states yes yeah, some states no do your thing be underground as we call it okay so the hair braiders court case is a unique and distinct case okay mm -hmm. because the herbrators case was sued under the 14th amendment okay okay on the freedom and constitution okay. there wasn't a question on do you need a license or not mm -hmm. it was kind of that but it wasn't that wasn't the question was it really so, about the money? Yeah, and it's really about the freedom of constitution it's really about the bill of rights okay so it goes also with the freedom of education it's a lot of different um cases that they have that are landmark cases that are tied to this case with the freedom of the heart raiders, right? Okay. So I don't think it's just as simple as a wave of the states. The states are in big trouble because as you can see, it's like instituted justice in different places are taken down in the states because it's at it's their actual case, right? But um this, the case stands more back to like Roe versus Wade, Browns versus education. Mm -hmm. So when you hear Lindsey Graham, when they were letting in that um, Supreme Court justice and said, in order to get these cases back here before her where she can mess them up, you'll be have to be stupid enough to appeal. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about, the Herbrader case. Because the Herbrader case is the case that's rolling back a lot of these different things. Okay. Where you ain't got to, they talking about abolish the police and all that because the police got a license. You even got a marriage license mm -hmm. that you got to have. This is going all the way back to all these different licenses in order to have some form of a business. That's why marriage is a business. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So it's like a whole trail. That is going back to that really ain't no no state can jump up and talk about licensing or how brave. That's why they that letter that letter even give us even more power. Okay. Ain't no state that letter say you get to go and do America. Okay, especially right now for one year for COVID, because they said that the herbaters can have shampoo bowls. How? When the white girls got the uh blow dry bar standing up here with a whole damn blow dry bar and a shampoo bed. <laughs> No, you can't do that. You get what I'm saying? So no. And so then after they was freeing the hair braiders, they went crazy and became these blow dry bar girls and these um what are they calling themselves? The personal care. Personal car assistance, okay? So they can't really get control of these people that don't want to have any regulation. But the main thing I can tell the people 
um, is that they still going to need to join some form of association. That way they have some type of bylaws and things like that. That's what I like about you when you tell them what they LLC stuff, you know, how to write their bylaws, how to write their articles. All this, you still going to need to be formed because America's ran on rules and RICO law. Either you're going to be have it wrote down or you're going to be like the Crips and you're still going to be a gang and have some rules and stuff, but they silent and secret and you're going to go down. How they say you either get down or you lay down. Right. <laughs> so I don't see a license, but I do see a form of certification. Okay. So, and then we're going to wrap it up right here. But I wanted to know in your opinion, what is the best way or what's your best tip for braiders to say to stay safe if they are going to choose to go out and still braid hair. Okay, just have their PPEs on. Go to that link that I sent you. You get them the link for the COVID thing and still operate with the COVID thing. Okay. Still operate with it. Even though you ain't a member and you don't got the thing there and all that, you still a silent member in my eye. And if you got it and you've been following it and I get called in court as the uh, expert witness, I'm going to advocate for you. Okay. It just doesn't matter that you don't, you can't afford it. You get what I'm saying? As long as you got all the stuff and you can prove that you've been having your PPEs, you got hand sanitizer, you got everything you need because you got to eat. Right, right. So I'm going to leave the link to that in the description below also. So I'll leave the link to your YouTube, the link to your course, and the link to what you suggest for us as writers as far as our PPE that we should have. Um, you guys, I did do a, video, a recent video after receiving an email from Denise and where I talked about, you know, what you need to know with COVID, like you need to stay up to date with your own state rules, but, but it, the information is accessible on the um, CDC, right? To tell you what you should and should not be doing as a small business while we may not be, you know, the, the, the regular or the, let me not say regular, the conventional version of small business, but we are out here running a business. So yes. please act like it, even if it is a side hustle, even if, even if you do feel like this is just gig work, you mm -hmm. need to be safe out here for your clients, but more so for yourself. So Denise, yeah. you can tell them where to find you one more time. Uh, you can find me at www.braiderscourse.com and I also help you with getting your business all the way certified with sam.gov so you can get some small grants as an individual. You don't got to get big grants that's having no course or nothing, but you want to have your business as a mic. They have something called micro small businesses, okay? So you can be a small business and still get your money. Yes. So thank you so much, Jen, and thank y'all, Pretty Gang. I'm a Pretty Gang member and uh, I hope we grow bigger, okay? <laughs> All right. So thank you. So thank much. you. All right. I'm going to end this. I end the recording. Let me see.